This is Tim DeLeo with UsingWindowsHomeServer.com. I'm here with John Zagler from Home Server Show Podcast. And we're just going over the home server installation process for our little D510 clear case here. Good evening, John. How are you doing today? Hey, Tim. I'm good. Thanks for inviting me. Well, thanks for being here. I know it's been about a month or so since we last worked on this project. One of the issues that I was having was is that I was trying to get the... Windows Home Server software loaded onto a USB stick, and I was having trouble getting the D510 motherboard to recognize the USB stick. What I did was is that I just went through Newegg and I bought a little $20 DVD drive, pulled off one of the hard drives, and just plugged it into the SATA ports. And now John is with me, and we're just talking a little bit about how the installation process is going and what's going to happen to the information on the drives. These two USB drives were backup drives that I had for my old Windows Home Server, which I've since converted to a Veilbox. So we're trying to make something low power. Now we don't have my kilowatt plugged in yet, but I'm hoping we're gonna get around 35 or 40 watts, which is the goal. And John, you had mentioned some interesting parts about the server installation. Yeah, I was just saying that since you have the two drives there, uh, when, you set, when you go through the menu and then it says, okay, it's gonna install the OS, that uh, one of the things it's going to tell you is that it, whatever drives are there, they're all going to get wiped. So that's something uh, you need to know. If you, if you know, let's say you had some data on the second drive and thinking that, okay, well, just add that to my shares or whatever. It's like, no, whatever drives are connected there, even if they're USB drives or whatever, they're all going to get wiped. Okay, so it's very important that if you're just going to have one system drive to start, that you just have that as the sole drive connected to the system and then add the other ones later on. Yeah, and usually a good thing too is sometimes if you're recycling drives, and let's say that, that drive that's gonna be your new OS, sometimes if it has a smaller partition, I think it's gonna just try to install it on that partition. So you should make sure that the drive is like, there's no you know, extra partitions on it or whatever, just you know, start with a fresh drive. Okay, so that would be one of the ones where I can use for example, just any Windows management tool and just go in and clear off any partitions, make sure my data is backed up, and make sure I start with basically a completely blank drive. Yep. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll clean it up later, or maybe I won't. So what we're looking at here now is we're looking at um, the little D510. Uh, the nice thing about the D510 is it doesn't have a fan, so you don't have to worry about any additional cooling with it. Uh, I have the side of the case off now. I have these little two 60mm um, fans running in the front. Uh, I have the two drives underneath, and then I have the DV drive just sitting on top while it's doing the load. And you can see here it says 52 minutes. We won't make you wait for the 52 minutes, but I'm basically just going through and running Windows Home Server installation. And I'm doing actually PowerPack 1 to start. Uh, this is going to be for a relative of mine, and I'm not installing PowerPack 3. I'm starting with PowerPack 1, which is my original license and my original software, and then I'll just let it go and go through and do the updates uh, over the next couple of hours after it does the load. Uh, I wasn't going to go and buy any additional software, and I wasn't going to load any beta or any other type of software on here, so that's where we stand. This is Tim DeLeo with using WindowsHomeServer.com. Uh, I'm here with John Zagler from Home Server Show Podcast, uh, a.k.a. Die Hard. Um, we're talking a little bit about the way the Windows Home Server software is installing. One of the tricks that you may want to try is disconnecting your network cable when you do your installation the first time. What happens is, is that uh, Windows Home Server, uh, depending on the power pack that you're installing, will go out and look for all of the updates. Isn't that correct, John? Yeah, that's it. When you uh, when you install the connector, that's usually the the best time that it's going to try and uh, go and get all the updates. So it's like your you know your computer you got to wait now for it to go get get all the updates. It might take over an hour to to get them all and then install them. So the best thing is you could say you know you just disconnect your internet from uh, from the wall because you still want to be connected from your uh, PC to your hub or your router and then to the home server. So um, that's it. Just disconnect the internet from the wall, and then what happens? It'll finish the uh, the connector software quicker, 
And then once it's done, once it's done that, then you can even my the way I like to do is remote desktop into the uh, the server, and uh, go there and then say, okay, you know, uh, go look for a win Windows update. And then so now when it's doing that, then in the background you can set up your shares, the usernames, and stuff like that. So you can be doing some other stuff while it's going to get the updates. Because if you do it the first way, if you wait for the connector to install. Then you gotta, you know, you're at the mercy of the of the home server getting all the updates, and then the connector will finish. So. Right, and since we're using Power Pack One on this installation, I've got two other Power Packs that have to go on top. So I'm gonna have to install Power Pack Two in order, and then it will go through and install the information uh, as needed. Reboot probably at least once, if not twice. Then install Power Pack Three. So it will do them in order, similar to Microsoft updates. So you could be looking at at least a couple of hours of updates from your original installation before you even have a usable Windows Home Server. That's right. Good stuff. I got nothing else. It's good enough. Yeah.